Hello and welcome to In the Art Scene podcast, a place where creatives share their stories. My name is Galina Marquez and I have another cool story prepared for you today, so let's get to it. Hello, Candice, and welcome back to In the Art Scene. So Candice Rodriguez is with us today, uh, first time on the actual episode. And actually, Candice was one of the first people I have ever interviewed for this project. And I did an article about her, and it's still on the website. So go ahead and go to intheartscene.com and find uh, an article about Candice and her son, Prince. Uh, it's been over a year, yeah. right? Yeah. So she is finally capable of finding some time in her busy schedule tra- as a traveling artist, like an art nomad. Yes, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to, come, to come on a podcast and talk a little bit about her life. So yeah, let's, uh, let's talk a little bit about what, what's up, what's going on. Maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit and, and, uh, and let's see where you are right now, which I know that you are in Florida. Uh, away from Salt Lake City and <laughs> doing all kinds yeah, so, of amazing things as usual. Awesome. So yeah, so I'm a traveling artist, like you had mentioned. Um, my artist name is Candice. So if you ever uh, try to look me up, that's how you find me, um, art. And I am originally from Venezuela. I was raised on the island of Margarita. And a lot of my inspiration does come from my upbringing on a beautiful place. Um, I currently live in Salt Lake City, and I'm here in Florida for three months of art shows. Um, I am booked every weekend uh, doing art shows, uh, so that's exciting. And then I take one month off, and I usually do a sabbatical somewhere. I either go to Bali or Mexico, and then I'm booked back again for the season out west. And Literally, I'm in a different city every weekend, exploring a different state, town, um, all over the nation. Well, first of all, uh, it is amazing because you are practically living in your van, right? Um, (laughs) Yes and no. I I have a lot of friends, so it's been really amazing to uh, it's been really amazing to be able to share with other people their hometown instead of just booking a hotel. I do a lot of camping in the summertime, mostly out West, like in Colorado and in Montana. Um, but yeah, I, I don't live in my van. <laughs> no, what, what I mean yeah, is yeah, yeah. That you're, you're on the road. You're not flying from, from city no, to city. No, 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 no. I'm driving. You're, you're packing your studio in your van. You're yeah. going to the new city every week. And yeah. uh, you're spending some time there doing the show. And then you're driving to another city. Totally. And a lot of times I drive back home to Salt Lake City after the show, see my partner, and then um, regroup in my studio, reload the van, and drive back out. My drives are usually three in Florida, three hours to four hours, and then at West, nine to ten hours. Wow. Yeah, wow. eight hours if I'm lucky, five hours if I'm lucky. <laughs> but I'm grateful because Salt Lake is a city that's centrally located, you know, a nine hour drive is a lot, but it's totally doable on the day. So I feel really fortunate to live in a city that's centrally located to so many other magical places like San Diego. You are 12 yeah. hours away from me. <laughs> um, and then Denver is 10 hours from me. And then uh, Montana, Whitefish, Montana, I go there quite a bit, is uh, nine hours. So, yeah. Awesome. There's- and when, whenever you're in San Diego, you, you get to see your mom too, right? Yeah, my mom lives in Baja, right in, over the border in Mexico. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I love to spend time there to do some more artwork there. I had a pleasure to meet her. She is such a lovely lady. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And she's she's so nice. She's supporting you a lot. That, that's really cool. I know. I get to see her. Yeah. And I get to see you. Yes. Next time <laughs> we have a date. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> awesome. Um, so, tell uh Tell, tell, tell us a little bit about, uh, so I know we put it in the article before, uh, we talked about your process and we talked about your upbringing and your inspiration. You're working a lot with nature. Uh, mm-hmm. so maybe you can, you know, just refresh a little bit. What was it like for you growing up? Uh, and how did you connect with nature and, and how did that happen that you, you know, you were raised in Venezuela and then you ended up in, in the United States? 
Yeah. So uh, my dad is Venezuelan and my mom is American and they met in college. And then I was raised, we moved back to Venezuela where my dad is from and raised in the island of Margarita because my parents are windsurfers. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Um, and my connection to nature was always like, I always knew from a really young age that I couldn't live in a crazy city, even though I live in a city of Salt Lake City. I don't really consider that a big city uh, just because it's surrounded by so much mountains and beauty. Um, but yeah, always from a young age, I always knew that plants were my friends. So and also once water. I, and water. Yeah, definitely. Um, so once I graduated from art school, I always knew I wanted to be an artist as well. And also my family recognized at a young age that I should be an artist and pursue my art career. So I graduated from college and then I really wanted to learn about plants, but I didn't want to pay someone to teach me anymore. I wanted someone to pay me to learn. So I started working at different um, organic farms as a field worker. Then I volunteer. I worked with a master gardener in Michigan. Then I became a certified master gardener in Florida. I was a florist. Um, and then I started volunteering at all these gardens all over Florida. And then I started to think, like, I started looking at my bank account. I'm like, okay, so where is this going? <laughs> because <laughs> I have five years of an art career. And then I had another five years of learning about plants. And I was at the, um, my boyfriend runs an e-commerce company. He sells bracelets that are handmade in Indonesia. His company is Wander Bracelets. And he we'll had make invited sure the link to his company. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. You guys will love it. It's a very beautiful company. Yeah. I have um, a few. I love them. I know. I yeah. wish I could give them to you. Um, so he invited me to, um, to work his trade show at the New York, um, uh, trade show. And, um, I had the incredible opportunity to meet this woman from South Africa. And she had told me about the process of sun prints, cyanotypes, and they're having an exhibition at the New York library. And as soon as I walked into that exhibition, it was just like one of those, like, you know, those one in a lifetime kind of experiences where you realize you've found your niche. Um, I always carry a journal with me and a big journal. So I wrote down in my journal, like kind of a rough draft of a business plan. And I presented it to my boyfriend and he was like, let's do it. Let's, let's make this happen. And he helped me out for a year at the beginning. And then um, it's been three years now. And I've been a full-time artist now for three years. That's amazing. That's amazing. Well, first of all, cyanotypes kind of combine all the things you love. Yes. <laughs> because it's it's the water, it's sun, and it's plants, right? So yeah, yeah. you have everything you love and you uh I, I saw the process and and you, you kind of you can pack some of that with you and and while you're on the road, depending on yeah, where you're totally. going, you can uh yeah, uh, especially somewhere in places like San Diego where we have oh, so much sun. Bamboa Park. Yes. I love Bamboa Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, uh, rewinding a little bit back, you finished the college, you graduated uh, college in Chicago, right? In Michigan. Michigan. Just, just to clarify yeah, uh, no, that you, you were not in, uh, yeah, in Venezuela anymore. No, I had moved when I was 18. I still went back and forth, but then obviously the political situation started to get a little harder. Yeah. And, and so I left, which is also a big part of my inspiration is that art will always have so much force over whatever's going on politically. Art will always be there. Yeah, totally with you. Totally with you on that. Uh, so I had another question for you. Um, so you are, uh, well, first of all, you're one of the highest energy people I have met in the <laughs> art world. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I get that a lot. I get called the exercise yeah. bunny. Oh yeah, you are. And you, you yeah, look totally. like one for sure. <laughs> I'm yet to find the place where you put the batteries. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't want to find that place. There's, there's enough batteries in there. <laughs> All right. So, uh, but also you have a very unique approach to what you do. So you are, uh, you're kind of living two, two lives that I personally have a very, a big struggle to combine together. So you are living this free nomadic 
artistic life, which, you know, a lot of like when we think about artists, like, yeah, you're a free spirit, you're driving places, you're making your art constantly, you're meeting people, you're in the shows, et cetera, et cetera. But yet you have a very, very structured business. Very structured. And you started yeah. it, you, like you created a business plan, you knew exactly yeah. what you're doing. So can you talk a little bit about, about that, how that came about and what's your outlook on, on this process and this journey how do you like even mentally how do you combine those things together in your head so um yeah and I get asked this question a lot and as I talk to other artists I can quickly realize how there's a level of disorganization and too much flow and everything I do is very structured I thrive on routines um so as soon as I went from being an employer to a business owner I bought a journal Number one, writing list, writing your goals, um, really, really owning up of what is my six months goals, what is my yearly goal, what is my two year goal, and five year goal. So I started out there. Google Sheets is amazing <laughs> because after now you structured where you want to be and what's the mega goal, the five years. So currently I am living my goals from three years ago. And my business plan gets rewritten every year because I've already evolved from the last one. Um, so the most important when you start a business is to not get squirrely. As much as I have all this energy, um, I found my niche. So once that's the step number one, you find your niche. One thing, I'm not a painter and a photographer and a cyanotype artist. I am a cyanotype artist then the way I make money with my artwork, with my outlet to sell it is through, for me, this is what works for me, is being a traveling artist. So I have this application that all traveling artists use. It's called Zap Applications. Um, and there is a list of all the shows that are going on in the nation. One app for all of that. So you can really, everything I do, I have structured three months in advance. I gotta so make like, sure we get the link from you. From I will, I will. Yeah. yeah, and I'll put that on the link. Um, so when you apply for art shows, um, you do them three months in advance. So right now, in the next two weeks, I'll be applying for my art shows that I would be doing this summer. Um, and uh, when, I have a quick question. Do you yeah. get accepted to all of them or do you get rejected? Most of them, and that's what I was getting to right now. Uh -huh. How to get accepted into these fine art shows. Um, so Sometimes I'll do a little bit of the craft side and I'll tell you why in a second. So you need to have an incredible booth picture. It's a 10 by 10 booth. And there are different types of canopies. That's the word I'm working with. Canopies that you can buy. There's a light dome company, which are um, a little harder to set up. So I recommend going the easier route, which are called easy ups. Then you need panels and you need your work presented I can actually send you also a link of what my booth photo looks like, for example. Also, there, there's so much information on Google. Um, but your artwork needs to be always presented as though you were walking into a gallery. That's the vibe we want to get. That's what people want to receive. Um, so you send out the booth picture. You have a description of your artwork and then art pieces. You do not pose in the picture in your booth when you're doing this, it's strictly your booth picture. Cause I've seen people do that. And I'm like, no, you're not going to get accepted if you do that. So there's that. Um, I'm right now after I've been doing this for three years, um, I am now getting accepted into one of the best shows in the nation. Um, one of them is Artigra, which is here in mm -hmm. Florida. And the other one is actually in Colorado, which is Cherry Creek. Um, sometimes I usually just do fine art shows, but it's nice sometimes to do the finer craft shows because you get to really stand out as a fine artist. That's um, interesting. Yeah. So it's kind of like, mm. um, it's just like a different approach to it. Cause, um, sometimes it's like, I'm, I'm just another one of the artists, but at the craft shows, I'm, I am like the artist at the show. Um, what you're relying on when you do these shows, a lot of it is trial and error. So you're relying on a promoter to promote your show. 
once I started to do these shows, I started to make friends with people who have been in the same industry for years, like 20 years, or just a lot longer than me. What I would do, I would have, I would start to notice who are the ones who are making the most money. People walking out with their artwork. And I would go to their booth and I'd be like, give me a critique of my booth. How can I be like you? So they would come in, give me a critique. I would make friends with them. And then I would ask them, can you send me the list of shows you're applying to? In this industry, we're all in it together. And you make so many magical friends. Like as much as I'm this traveling artist, I'm on the road all the time. I never feel lonely because I'm always constantly going out to dinner with other artists, getting to know other people, um, getting to know customers. Um, so it's just so much fun. And all the shows I do, it's like all my homies are here. We're all in it together. Um, and some days you have a killer show, but once a year, I'll get a show where I didn't sell anything. And that is just part of being a business owner and being a risk taker. But um, being organized with, you know, your Google Sheets of all the shows you're doing, having it on your Google Calendar, understanding how much money. So now we're going to talk about cash flow. Yeah, I want to I want to ask the question before yeah. before we jump on the cash flow. Okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, no. Uh, yeah, sorry for interrupting. So, uh, I I think that this is this is what scares a lot of artists away from from yeah. doing this thing. So you're uh, you're talking from the experience already, right? But yeah. what it uh, I assume what it feels like to someone who's who's starting from scratch, like they don't have photos of their booths, so they will have to find a way to get accepted. Uh, they have a, a, a big fear that because those shows, the applications cost quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, you know, it's like it, 25 to $15. And then once you get accepted, it's 200 to 500. I mean, yeah. It's $700. And, and in places like San Diego, Art Walk San Diego can be what about five, $600 for, mm -hmm. for 10 by yes. 10 booth. It, yeah. It's for someone who's starting their art career, it's a lot of money to invest without yeah. any guarantee that they are going to sell anything. So, and this so, is the, the guarantee you do get when you do the fine art shows. And this is what I always tell people. You're the best thing you're going to get out of these shows, whether you make money or not, people are going to tell you what they want. And then you can start evolving from that. Because when I first started, people were constantly telling me what they want, what they wanted. And I would take notes. What, because what you like and what sells are two different things. Well, now you're speaking my marketing language, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a marketer for sure. Well, you yeah. are. And I guess you, you kind of yeah. learn it all, um, you know, all on your own, all on your own food, right? By just yeah. doing those things and kind of noticing things and... and uh, Being entrepreneurial, for sure. Yeah. Well, you, you definitely have that in you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Hustle in. Hustle in. Nothing good comes easily. So, okay. So... What would okay, you so say starting to, out. Yeah. What uh, would you say okay. to someone who is who's too scared to start? Okay. So uh, number one, get an inventory of work done. Just do it. Whatever happens, happens. You're going to be spending like $300 on a canopy and then another $500 on walls. People start out at farmer's markets. Let's go to the farmer's market. And then from there, it's like when I started out, I started at an antique market show, which it was... Sorry to say this, but it was kind of a shit show. <laughs> and then from there, I was like, okay, I don't want to work with this person anymore. I don't. And from there, I started to see what other options were out there. Um, I didn't have pro panels. I didn't have anything. Like I was selling literally my artwork from a table. Then I would also go to coffee shops and they would have little markets. And I would just, uh, with magnets on a, this one fence, they had like a metal fence. I would just, magnet on my artwork and I didn't have anything. Um, so just starting out there, I always recommend them. Farmer's market's a great place, but always walk the shows. So before I did um, art walk in San Diego, I walked it. Before I've um, 
living in Utah, I went to all the fine art shows and I would just ask questions, be like, just without overwhelming the artists, because the artists are there to sell artwork. They're not there to talk about their booths. So it's, you have to be tasteful of how you do this. Um, Cause I've had people approach me and just like, Hey, like Google has the answers, bro. But if you're kind and you're like, Hey, um, how, where do I purchase this? Or like, uh, just, just keep going to booth to booth and just asking questions and always, um, the other thing I was going to say, walk museums as you're Uh starting out, look at what the masters are doing. There are so many amazing museums. I don't care where you live. There's always going to be a museum close by or two hours away. Sit in that museum, visit it every day if you have to. And just analyze and just stock, literally stock the masters. Even if it's opening up a book, just start from somewhere. Get and be, like I said, find your niche. And that's why I recommend going to the farmer's markets first figuring out what sells and just start asking, like just listening to what people are going to tell you. One of the things I learned in art school is that everyone's going to like your work and everyone's going to hate your work. So just own up that you're going to get unwanted uh, feedback. Like I'm always getting people telling me, Oh, why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? La la la. You listen to them, but then you start to realize what works and what doesn't. And who's actually buying because who's giving you compliments isn't buying. You want to yes. be listening to the people who are buying. That's them. true. That's true. That's true. All right. I, I wanted to add to it very quickly. So I, I have done my first uh, San Diego art walk uh, last year in November. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations. October. Yeah. Thank you so much. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was there with you. Yeah. <laughs> that was so nice to see you. Yes. So uh, the way I did it, because I was I was scared to death as well, uh, but okay. I was kind of got I got lucky and I got to share a booth with someone who has done it before. So she applied right. under her name. So it was very easy for her to get accepted. And I was kind of like a co-artist in the booth. So now uh, now they know me. Now they know what kind of work I do. So it's yeah. the easy way of getting in. It was the easy way of splitting the cost. Uh, and it's also, it was a great learning experience. I, I didn't sell much. I, I did I did sell some. I think I, I broke even in the end, but I got a really cool commission out of it, which, okay. yeah, which I just finished like a couple of weeks ago. Uh, that was, wow. so overall, I was kind of in a positive, uh, but yeah, it was, it was really scary. So uh, yeah, I, I think that might be like another tip for, for someone who is just starting. Definitely, definitely. Find a friend. Find a friend. Yeah, find a friend. Um, The other thing I was going to say, so don't get your mind so wrapped up at the beginning of making the money. Just you starting your Instagram and getting people to follow you, that person personally met you. And now you ask them, hey, before they leave, and I do this to every person that walks into my booth, whether they're going to buy from me now, they're going to get to know me. So, hey, do you want to follow me on Instagram? Make a website. It really isn't that hard. YouTube has the answer to everything. Yeah, that's true. What I recommend, I personally love Shopify. And that's what I use for my website. I know there's other obviously companies, but I love Shopify. And I know a lot of e-commerce companies use Shopify. It's so easy nowadays to make a website. I have mine on uh, just a regular WordPress just because it's more convenient for me. And I have my e-commerce set up with WooCommerce. Uh, Some people are using some other easy platforms and using Etsy for their selling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. platform uh, square i think is going really big right now which is also kind of oh, cool everything in one so you you get a website you get e-commerce with it so yeah it, it is it is very easy let's take a short coffee break are you enjoying this episode if you do would you buy me a coffee i would really appreciate it the link is in the show notes and on our website in the art Thank you for your support. A question for you here, and, and I know yeah. that we're getting more into marketing than art. But yeah, think, yeah, no, no. But this is important for other artists yes, to understand yes, this part. I do because you, you have they they go together. I yes, I I, I do get it, and 
a lot of artists are actually struggling with it because it's a totally different mindset. It, it's like you it have is. to think about work differently. It's it's uh, it's the other side of the coin when you're yeah. doing this. So uh, follow followers on Instagram. Cool, you get people to your website, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And you, emailing you, list. That's what my question was. Yeah. Do you collect? I email? use Mailchimp. I do. Cool. Uh, so I use Mailchimp, and the Mailchimp is connected straight. So what I do, I don't have any more business cards. I have a QR code. It's uh, currently on my phone, but the way I would recommend is printing it out and have it like on a pretty picture frame. Get the people. Everyone has their phones. So when you hand out a business card, you're taking the risk that someone's going to lose that. But if you take a picture from your phone, direct them straight to your website. Then you have a pop-up show up where they can immediately follow, put their email in. And what I do to get them to keep, to follow me is that everything on my website is raised. So when you come to buy from me personally, from a show, you're actually getting a better deal than from my website. But every quarter I give out a 30% off deal. So people want to be part of that emailing list. The other thing I do is that I tell little stories. So it's kind of more like a blog, really, my email, but I'm keeping people engaged. It's like, hey, I'm I'm here. I'm still here. Like, this is what I've been up to. I've been traveling. Um, I've learned all these things. I visited these botanical gardens. Um, and sometimes I don't even show a link back to my website. I always just show a link to like my new inventory. Um Uh, one of the things I'm just going to say is like, don't make your goals in such a way that they're unobtainable. Don't not do an email campaign because you haven't updated your website. The thing the most, the, for my business model, the thing that I'm updating the most is, um, my upcoming events. That's where I want people to always see where I am so they can plan accordingly or tell their friends where to see me. So So how how often do you send the emails? I do once a month or once every two months, depending on how I'm feeling. Uh, Make it short, make it simple, make it easy. Sometimes I send really long emails to tell them this grand story and adventure I had, but I make it fun for them. Like um, sometimes like when I first started, I was like, no one's going to read this. And then I started to realize that some people are going to read it and they love reading it. And the people who don't will unsubscribe. And I do get a little sad when I get people unsubscribed, but hey, when five unsubscribe, seven subscribed. Because I'm always constantly getting that email going. And um, consistency is key. Whether you think it's not working, just keep it going. Just keep being consistent because it does work. Yep. Like my Instagram, when I thought no one would be looking at my stories, I sometimes get 300 views. Like that's insane. I get people writing me back being like, Hey, why haven't you posted? I'm like, really? Lady. <laughs> yes. I'm <laughs> telling awesome. you consistency is key. That's awesome. Um, so how, how big is your email list sorry, right I have now? To charge. Um, so right now I have, I think like, no, it's not a crazy amount yet. Like it's maybe 10,000. Oh, that's a, that's a pretty good size email list. So uh, how big was it when you started sending emails? Oh, zero. To, zero? zero. Oh, I just had like maybe 20 people and they were like friends and family. Cool. <laughs> Anyone. I even started like adding ex-boyfriends just so <laughs> I could put some more on the list. Like I was desperate. Anyone. That's amazing people. So here's a tip for you. If you <laughs> include your access in your email list, <laughs> if you'll kill two birds with one stone. First, you'll yeah. tell them how cool you are doing without exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> and then you'll feel better about yourself because yep. you have more on your list. <laughs> um, oh, but yeah, awesome. that was cool. So now let's talk really quick about uh, Google Sheets and cash flow because this is a really Yeah, part. okay. So for um, a couple, so every quarter... I think it's really understand to see how much money you have. So when I apply to these shows, like we talked about, they're like $300 to $500 a piece. So I'm spending in a season of like three months, quite a bit of money. Um, So it's really important to understand that first you need to calculate the money you're spending on materials. The investment has been already originally made for your canopy, 
Like that's, that's a one-time investment. So the sooner you can do it, the better. Your first year, you're really not going to be making any money because you're going to keep putting it back. It's always going to be cycling back to your company and you're going to have a little bit of like food, like whatever. Like I don't recommend just going straight to the art career. Just keep that other job, but keep feeding this one right here. Um, and then after that consistency and you start realizing what works, what doesn't. So you have to calculate materials and art shows. So there's going to be a gap where that first month where you're not going to be making a profit. There's no way. But you've already paid off the overhead. So you already calculated now from those two chunks on your Google Sheets, what is the, the roundup money of what you want to make? So it's also important to give a visual to like as you're calculating these shows. So what I do is I write down the show, the application fee, the fee for the show, then my gas expenses, my um you have to pay taxes, so your tax expenses, your food, and then your expected sales. What do you expect to make out of these shows? So after you can expect, you can calculate your expected sales, you can have a rough draft of what you expect to make. So how do you so then visually how how do you get that rough estimate of what you are expecting to so make? So like I on average, just to share with you guys, like uh when you start this career, you gotta be making at least two thousand dollars at these shows. Because you got to pay for your food. So it's like $100, $1,000 profit at this point, which is, you know, $4,000 a month. So if you could average your shows of you making, you know, $2,000 at each show, you know, uh, without calculating necessarily your expenses of when you're at the show, like food, gas, blah, blah, blah. Um, at one point, I was already calculating how much my gas was going to be in advance, but it got a little too tricky. So I just recommend just having mostly a visual of how much money you need to actually make to keep this going. So then at the end of that quarter, because every quarter you're going to be looking at these Google Sheets, you can actually see where you're at and where you're going. And then um, I'm, what I'm coming to with all of this, I don't want money to ever feel scary. And it shouldn't ever feel scary because you understand your cash flow. So then you can calculate how much you have in your bank account. And then from there, now you know for your next seasons how much you've spent on materials, how much you're going to spend on shows, and how much you expect to make at the end of each quarter. Yeah, I also wanted to add to this that uh, you also need to take your inventory. Uh, it, you, you keep that in mind as well because you need to yeah. obviously have enough inventory for yeah. uh, selling it for correct prices to make that goal for each yeah. show, right? Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Have totally. you ever and run out uh, of inventory between the shows? No, but I did have a scenario where I sold too many custom frames, okay. which was a great problem, and I had to drive back home and get more. Okay, and that was a nine-hour drive. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So uh, always keep your inventory extra stacked. Um, but yeah, I always try to get as much custom print here in Florida. I have a. Um, I'm friends with my custom framer. So if some, if I ran out of something, I can order one immediately. Um, out West, I order way more in bulk, but I'm figuring out more of my custom frames here. So I'm going to be making a lot of custom frames here and then shipping them out to Florida. And the way you ship artwork is that you go to UPS and you ship things in bulk. I'm spending like $400 to ship my pieces of artwork over, but it would be so much more expensive if I went to any other place. But if you bulk them all together, they'll give you a better deal. All so right, don't you, ever, yeah. Uh, okay, so question here. You mentioned custom framing. So yeah. Custom because of the custom sizes or custom because of the custom look? Uh, look and sizes. And sizes. Yeah. So wouldn't it be more... Um, wouldn't make more sense for you to actually go to at least you know two three looks uh having in your inventory and cost not the custom but standard sizes which probably will be you know easier to get somewhere involved. yeah and no but the look is not there my okay. custom framer does such a good job um and and i do recommend if you're interested is to go to your local custom framer and talk to them you know, just walk in and, you know, order a piece, talk to them, uh, tell them you're an artist and see if 
they'll work with you. Um, but yeah, for me, it's all about the presentation and the look. And I charge more for that. If you don't want to custom frame it, you can buy a, uh, just a, a normal. So all of my artwork is one of kind. I have thought of putting chiclets in there, but I've also don't want to do that because I don't want to be selling. So I'm at a point right now where I'm not selling anything that's not under $250. Mm-hmm. The chiclets would lower my prices and then people would have the possibility to buy 30 to $40 pieces, but that's not where I want to be anymore. Like now, once you start to decide as an artist where you're evolving and where you're going, you'll start to realize you don't need this down here anymore. Maybe as a starting out point, but um, I, I don't recommend doing sheet class. And usually in the fine art shows, the real competitive ones, they don't want that in there. Yeah, I know some some even have like um, it, it written in their rules that 90% of what you present in your booth should be original. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, the other thing about galleries, I just wanted to say mention that really quick. Um, so I haven't really worked with galleries yet. One of the things that I've always uh, part of my business plan is that I'm an independent traveling artist. That is like my title. Um, when you start to work with galleries, they're going to take forty percent. I do At not least. recommend you start working. Like, get your name out there understand who you are because at first you don't really value yourself as an artist and you're selling everything for super cheap and you're making like half of the money you thought you're going to be making later how how much and, and how much were you selling your work for when you just started just just out of curiosity oh god nothing like i would be so excited just because i made 300 dollars. wow yeah i was nothing like all those people really and they knew it and i knew it and actually at the beginning i would hide my best pieces from myself so, not to sell so them not to sell them for too cheap Mm-mm. no because yeah. i was just trying wow. to just i was just getting the feedback i was just and it didn't matter at that point because i was given the opportunity to keep creating more and that's all you need at that point when you're starting out you just need the opportunity to someone to buy it so you can make another one and another one and another one and then from there you start to review you start to value yourself confidence is bigger and you start to understand okay I could actually make this full time now. But yeah, putting yourself online on social media. I do sell from my website every once in a while. I do sell from my emailing list. I sell a lot from my Instagram and it's people personally DMing me. And obviously at the shows like you, like you were at the show, you didn't make maybe the money you thought you would, but then someone communicated back to you that they wanted a commission. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I hope everything right. is, well, I hope yeah. you guys understood that. No, everything is, you know, you, you are doing a really good job putting it, you know, uh, in a really easy kind of understandable step-by-step way. Uh, and I know that you're talking from your personal perspective as an independent traveling artist, because that's work that that's what works for you. Uh, yeah. but I, I think it's, it's going to be very useful for pretty much any artist, uh, because the concept of how to. Uh, how to run your business is still there yeah right yeah it it always needs to be there and and the way you need to approach this is as you're running a business yes so if you want to make a a living out of your artwork because i know that there are some other ways of like some people are teaching like i'm teaching cool uh, for example some some people are keeping their day job and just doing it for fun etsy is another way to make great money yeah so Mm -hmm. uh the the bigger parts of running a business or like the whole marketing approach is still there. Uh, start small, collect the feedback, get to know your niche, get to know, get to know mm-hmm. your audience. And then from there, you kind of like, and put the, put the system in place. Write that yeah. business plan. Write that business plan. Just write it. You, uh, did you use something as a, as a template for your business plan or you kind of, uh, so up. my boyfriend is a business owner. So okay. he actually, he, he reviewed you. the business. Yeah. He helped me. Okay. Yeah, he helped okay. me get that, get on my feet. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But I have shared, um, I have shared my t- template in the past, uh, with some emerging artists. Uh, it didn't really work necessarily for them because it was so personal to me, but I think just Googling business plan, like, and that's one of the things that people get stuck and suddenly forget that Google exists and then YouTube exists and, and even podcasts exist. So it's like literally just sitting down and just being like, when you start out, just be a stalker, 
to like, who are your favorite artists? You know, how did they become successful? Walk the fine art shows, see who's making the money. Why are they making the money? One of the issues that I'm having as a fine artist is that my scale is not there yet. So like there are certain shows I'm not ready to apply for, like one in Park City in Utah, my own Mm -hmm. hometown, because my scale is not there. And I know that. So it's like, I'm still learning every day how to even create these large scale cyanotypes. But if you're a painter, get smaller, but then slowly start to get bigger and bigger. People want big. Yeah. That's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Go big. It's uh, one of the things that when a promoter told me was go big or go home. That's interesting. So you mentioned this promoter a couple of times. So uh, I, I want to ask about that. But before I yeah. want to make a, a little comment, because uh, I went to the show with four huge originals. And then I had a, a collection of tiny little mini originals on the wood panels. And then I had a bunch of prints. Uh, yeah. And my my uh, my thinking was I kind of have to diversify because the big originals, there's a few of them. They're quite expensive. They might not find their uh, ideal owner, and they didn't. They they still sit in my studio. Uh, uh, I, but I uh, I did end up selling pretty much all my mini paintings. Uh, I, I did not okay, sell any so, prints. So so yeah. you you would think that. Uh, and I guess it might depend on the type of the show or maybe type of the art. I, I always thought that, you know, having something small and a different price range uh, is, is kind of giving you a little bit more of a leeway um, to, you know, sell more. So and, Okay, and, so the big pieces. Uh-huh. So you have in your booth, you have three walls, right? Yeah. You want those big pieces to impress the people who can afford the big pieces. Whether they buy from you or not. Those big pieces always need to be there because those are your impressing selling points. People are walking into your booth because they're seeing the big pieces. And then they're like, turn around this way. And they're like, oh, but she's got all of these little guys, you know? So it's like, for me, it's always important. So for me, the, the back wall will always be like um, your showcase. Like, mm-hmm. And this is the other thing. Getting someone in your booth is a big deal. Huge deal. Once they're in your booth, it's, it's like amazing because you're like, I finally was able to give someone the confidence enough to even walk in. So that number one is huge in itself. So how do you um, get them in your booth? The big pieces, having that okay. really okay. big, beautiful presentation and having that wow factor. So like with my custom frames, I don't sell them all the time. I have these $50 bandanas and I'm selling those every 30 minutes. And I'm selling these other pieces over here every 30 minutes too. So it's like, keep your money is actually coming from the smaller pieces, but then every once in a while you get someone with those big pieces. And that's when your money is like, that's where your name's actually getting out there because then people who can afford the big pieces, you're able to impress everyone. So So basically your booth is adaptable for all prices. And that's the way I try to keep mine. So it's like, I have that $200, $250, one of a kind, beautiful piece of artwork. But then I have this $3,000 piece over here. So that for some people, that's chicken change. Yeah, that's true. $200. Two hundred and fifty dollars is a lot of money for a lot of people, and if they truly love artwork, they're going to spend that little bit of money they have on something they love, and they're going to feel. And don't ever degrade your prices either. Um, start out like you know, make your prices good. Don't over exceed them. Like make them like uh, somewhere where you think of yourself as always as the customer. Like how what would you actually spend on this piece if you were a customer? And that's how I always start to think of everything. Um, but, um, can I, can, can, yeah. can I, can I, can I, yeah. can I interrupt you for a second? Is there yeah. a way for you to kind of go in a different place? Because it's just, I know. Um, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but, but we can wrap this up a little bit soon oh, if, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, sorry everybody for the background. Uh, I know. Sorry. Uh, Candice is in the frame shop, uh, um, but like the friends of yours who own the um, shop yeah the framer <laughs> yeah and, and uh, if you want to we can we can promote them on a podcast as well um, yeah that'd be great 
uh, yeah, and and it's a it's a work of it's a place of business. So they're actually doing what they're doing. So they're doing frames right now. They're just allowing her to use the space. Uh, to use their Wi-Fi because in her new uh, place Wi-Fi is not working. So, thank you. Big, yeah. up, big apologies for the for the background noise, but it, it, yeah. Anyway, yeah. As long as you're speaking loud enough, uh, I think we're okay, good. Cool, cool, okay, cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, but what were you going to say? Right. Did you have any more questions for me? Uh, no, I was just going to interrupt you to see if we can get into a quieter place. I think like most of all of this, um, I think the other thing about the fine art shows that I do being a traveling artist, you will get the confidence through being on the road. And I also get asked a lot. I don't really mention to people that I do this by myself. I'm in a committed relationship, but my boyfriend doesn't come with me on the road. And so when I see a lot of ladies doing these shows, I'm like, you are more than capable of doing this by yourself. Because sometimes I've seen marriages and relationships get a little funky doodle uh just own up to your business on your own you got this all the tools are out there and if you have any questions you know there will always be someone to answer those questions for you and don't ever be afraid of asking the questions i i I think it's a it's a great encouragement for everyone yeah for women and for men and for non-binary artists as well so you can do it you can do it on your own just yeah you just how badly do you want this exactly exactly yeah Yeah, right well i think it's a good place to wrap this up oh so good Uh, to see you you and thank you so much for this incredible opportunity and i will send you the links to all those things yes Um, for sure we will we'll make sure to put everything uh the photos of your booth uh you in the booth your art uh all the links how to find you all the places where people can can find the schedule of your uh travels yeah yeah your online shop uh yeah yeah. to promote your uh, framer friends we can oh yeah 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 they're here in west palm (laughs) beach yeah he's a great guy he's amazing yeah 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 well i love you thank you for everything and and i will talk to you soon yeah and i'll I'll, i hope to see you back on the podcast uh but when is when is your next kind of big goal setting thing Uh, so in like may in may we can do another, yeah we can do another podcast in may um we'll or see. sooner we'll see we'll see about that i was thinking about uh watching your progress because you said that you are in three year kind of a goal oh yeah yeah, right yeah. Now, okay so. yes definitely yes so maybe if not sooner maybe in uh, uh like in a year or so yeah 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 definitely well it was so great to see your yeah, face it's i'm so glad this too. worked out i'm gonna run back to my studio all but, right well thank you so much yeah. for coming and i will see you next time in the art scene it has been another episode of in the art scene podcast if you liked today's conversation please give us a good review on apple and go listen to other great stories check out our website in the art or follow us on instagram at in the art scene for more content if you are a creative and you want to share your story, shoot us a message from the website or DM us on Instagram. Look forward to seeing you next time in the art scene.